Welcome back to Monroe Live. So today we have a chance to look at a Polestar 3. Now we've had some previous Polestars in the building before, but never have I had a chance to actually look at one and review one myself. So this vehicle, $85,000 sticker price, $95,000 in the package that we have today. Uh, looking at it, it's quite substantial, quite large. Uh, personally, I, I have a weird feeling about this paint color. I've seen a lot of vehicles recently that have what I would almost want to call not really a flat, but kind of like a traditional pastel color. There's no real metallic, no real pearl, no real effect in the paint. We've seen a lot from Ford and a few other companies. So I guess that type of more of a muted paint tone is more popular. Now, used to be if you got the metallic paint, oh, there was an upcharge, it was a little bit more money in order to get that. This is already a $95,000 vehicle, so I would assume that if there was an upcharge for paint, I'm already paying it at this price. Looking at these wheels, I measured them. They're either a 23 inch, 24 inch wheel. Uh, that seems a, a bit high and a bit aggressive for the vehicle, but they're quite nice. I, I, I do like the look and the stance. High end is simple. Um, the way I normally used to try to describe that is I would see some people who would want to put all of the bells and whistles, every little decoration within a vehicle. But I would always give them, styling wise, look at a high end bag. Look at something like a Louis Vuitton bag, Hermes, something like that. They're more simple, they're more muted. So when I look at this door panel, they are fairly nice materials, but there's really not a lot going on. But what is there is stylized, it is appealing. The real cutting and sewing fabric type materials, nice feel, nice soft edges, nice transition to the parts that are still plastic. I like the overall look, I like the overall styling. The decorative lighting, rather than just have it as an accent, this actually puts out quite a bit of light. It could technically be more of a task light within the vehicle. So this is a $5,000 upcharge for Napa leather seats. Um, I, I like the leather seats. I like the feel of leather seats. I don't know if they're giving you more function with that $5,000 because I don't know if just the material is worth that amount of money. But looking at the styling of these seats, you'll see all the perforations. This is a ventilated and a heated seat. One thing that I thought was kind of interesting, this little decorative metallic feature. When I see things like that, I'm reminded of sun visors. Sun visors in basically the 60s would have a binding edge around their edge. Well, the binding had to stop. And wherever the binding stopped, you had to be able to close it off and pinch it off. And they would have either a chrome or a stainless steel little clip that they would snap over to close off where the binding ended. Now, I see that here, and you'll also see a feature like that on the dashboard, right there at the end of the corner. So it's not serving the purpose of what those decorative end clips were on the sun visors of the 60s or 70s, but when I see that feature, that is what I think of. Now, how do you know this is a Napa leather seat? Well, it tells you right there on the seat. No animals are killed for their leather. Leather is a byproduct of the beef industry. So if we did not use this byproduct, it would just be thrown into a landfill. Whenever we want to talk about a leather being environmentally, environmentally friendly, normally what we're talking about is in the processing, uh, how we actually tan the leather, trying to use the least amount of chemicals and the least amount of water, because there is a lot of water that is used in the tanning process. So by minimizing the waste in those processes, we say we have a more environmentally friendly leather. So we have a material that would have been a waste byproduct that we are saving. We're trying to tan it in an environmentally friendly way. Whereas if you have a vegan leather, it's made from oil. So all of those vinyls, all of those plastic rubbery materials, that's all made from oil. So when you consider that and thinking about the leather is a waste product that we are using water to tan it kind of makes you have to think a little bit 
Some people say, well, I don't agree with eating beef anyway, so that's why I'm going to stay away from leather. Okay, you can make that decision. Just know that you're increasing the amount of oil that we are using. So this is a low profile headrest. This is a fixed non-adjustable headrest. And this is something that I had criticized Tesla for. Tesla has a fixed headrest on all of their vehicles, but yet their seat structure still uses all of the exact same components as an adjustable headrest. So though we will not be able to tear this vehicle down, whenever I see using a fixed headrest, you've already made the decision to remove the feature to the customer, I would like to see what internal structure is supporting this fixed headrest and see if they have any benefit, any cost savings to the manufacturing process by having a structure like that. So in looking at the materials of the center console, it is a fairly simple style. Wrap center console armrest lid, and then this center console main structure here. We do have wireless charging, but when you look, there's few buttons, okay. There's still that high gloss piano black finish, all right. There is a, what appears to be a timbre door to open up for a cup holder, okay. Other than the chrome decorative edging, it's still very, very simple, although high end. But not a lot of storage space inside of the center console storage bin. There is another storage pocket that's kind of weird. It's right up here. This is basically an elastic spring-loaded flap covers up for a storage bin. USBs right above it. Now, I'm questioning how am I using this? What am I sitting there? My phone is here. I have a bin that basically has very little storage, very, very flat. Someone said, well, that's where you're gonna put your insurance information. I'm like, okay, but can I get to it? This center screen doesn't move. This center console does not move. I can't reach through this, so I have to come in from the side. When I open this up, I really can't see what's in there. And since it's elastic, it also will not stay open. So I have to hold it open while I'm accessing whatever's inside. It's kind of an odd feature, so I, I don't really know if I like that. We have a window to window air vent, but this is still an adjustable air vent. So it has all of the mechanisms in there to give you those adjustable features. When we look at some of the Teslas, rather than have those mechanisms, they had opposing fans so that it could direct the airflow. So this still has a traditional air vent, but yet with a similar window to window look. So as I've said many times in the past, I am a very big guy. I was just sitting in the passenger front seat. I did not readjust the seat before I got out and came around to the rear. You'll see how much room I have, how much headroom, how much knee room. This is a very comfortable position for someone of my size. So that is a plus in my book. AC controls and USB for the rear occupant. That's quite nice. This is a mount for a child seat. Now they have created an injection molded bezel that holds open this nice wide hole for snapping in that child seat. But then they make a little cap to close it out when you're not using it. But that cap does not attach to the seat. It pulls out, throw it in your glove box, throw it in your garage, it gets lost, you sell the car, you don't have the caps. I do not like these features in general. Lots of times you can actually just mount this in the joint between the seat back and the seat cushion. Um, then you have some movement in the cushion to access that point. These plastic housings, I really don't care for. The fact that you also now have four loose parts that can become lost. So a full down center armrest, nice cushion top, perforated leather with a nice design in it, a deployable cup holder. So I still have my nice comfortable armrest and I still have a cup holder. All of that is quite nice. Now there's also a flap here. We'll show you it from the rear. This is a pass through. So if you had very, very long items that did not fit in the rear and you wanted to pass through, you can in a very small hole. However, my question is, if I have something large that I'm trying to travel with, 
do I want it sitting on top of this nice perforated leather? So I think it might be a function that you really wouldn't want to use anyway. So with the rear storage compartment, here is the pass through that I was showing you from the front. Uh, hard plastic door, so I would only have a very narrow area to put something long through. So I don't think that's a feature that I would ever really want to try and use. I have one problem with this load floor. Normally on a load floor, you would flip it up. You'd have access to anything that you're storing there, but I would still have this area available for storage that I could sit on top of my flipped up load floor. But this hinge bends the other way. When I lift this up, it bends back on itself. I have access to my storage bin, but if I try to use this to set anything on top of there, uh, that's really not gonna work well. So I think that this load floor kind of bends in the wrong direction. I think that it should hinge here, my personal opinion. This vehicle does have a small frunk. And for a lot of these electric vehicles, everything is powered. Everything has some sort of remote latch, remote lock. But this frunk is very similar to a traditional hood. I have my mechanical release there. Then I have a push to the side and mechanical release here to open up for my frunk. Not a very large trunk, frunk, as you see here. Basically, it holds my uh, charge cables, but it does exist. So my thoughts on the Polestar 3. All right, $95,000. Most of the vehicles that we look at were in the fifty dollars to $60,000 range. And unfortunately, that has become the base for an electric car. The interior offerings on a lot of those vehicles, I tend to stay away from. I, I really did not like them. Now, the Rivian at 75,000 was quite nice for its interior, but I really believe that they overspent. 95 with the leather seats, if you remove the leather seats, you're getting it in the high 80s. Would I want this vehicle for that price? I kind of like it. I am comfortable in every seat within this vehicle. I like the styling that is inside this vehicle. I like the materials and the functions that it offers, I feel meet what I would need for my lifestyle. I'm still not buying one, but I do like the Pulsar 3. Again, I was never able to view any of the other ones. So this is my first view of this company. And for my first view of this company, I like it, I, I do. I would like to see more and see where this goes. So thank you very much for watching Monroe Live. Please tune in to future videos and other reviews. Have a good day.